G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. It's come to my attention that there was a bit of a spat on cloudy nights about uh, my videos and some opinions I have that showed up in the eyepieces forum on cloudy nights and uh, there was a bit of back and forth there and it has given me a chance to get in front of the issue and really think about my actions and my words and how it affects people. Um, so I thought I'd get in front of it and do a night of astrophotography for you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Okay, I've got a new camera to test, which is the QHY268M. I've got a lot to say about this camera, but spoiler alert, you may as well organize the funeral, organize the wake, call the undertaker, get the coffin, because CCD is dead. She's dead, wrapped in plastic. Now, I've been on record on this channel before talking about the differences between CCD and CMOS and saying that CMOS wasn't quite there yet. They weren't ready to take the mantle from CCD, especially as a scientific tool, but I think we've finally reached that point and I think this camera will show this. I'm going to show you a montage of me getting my first light images, I'm going to show you some results and I'm going to talk about the camera specs, the specs that I care about and a few things I didn't like about this camera. Now full disclosure, I haven't been paid, I haven't been given this camera, I don't have any obligation to say anything particularly about this camera but having used it, I think I want to buy it. Before we get into it you might have noticed in my observatory it's looking like a Mardi Gras of inclusivity lately. I have all sorts of different brands all connected to each other, all working in harmony. It's amazing. And I like that about standards, the fact that we can plug and play anything we want. So if you're thinking about buying any astronomy equipment, I do recommend Bintel. Bintel is where I get all my equipment. And I spoke to them because they know I'm doing this video and they support QHY products. They will help you like they helped me with the adapter situation get that QHY humming. I had a chat to John and he's let me run a special deal. So details of the deal down below if you want a discount on one of these cameras. All right, let's get into it. Now, of course, the sensor on this camera is not unique to QHY. It's a Sony sensor and that sensor is shared with the ZWO2600. Slightly different naming convention. The naming conventions I find are all over the place with astronomy cameras. Uh, but at least they're numbers that sort of mean something to someone. You basically need to check the specs every time and work out if the camera is going to be right for your particular telescope. You can use a calculator I developed to figure that stuff out. There are some differences between the ZWO and the QHY. One of the main differences is the memory. There's a lot more memory on the QHY, which means that the readout speeds will be higher and you'll be able to manage a greater amount of data. And this is common with QHY cameras. They kind of service that upper level of the industry and the cameras that they make can be used for scientific inquiry not just pretty pictures. You'll find that the this generation of QHY cameras has the CFW port so you can integrate directly with a QHY filter wheel. So there is a whole ecosystem once you make the jump to QHY but you don't have to. There are standards in astronomy. Most of you are probably familiar with the M42 standard, the spaces and the adapters that you need for that. Now one of the issues that I came across with getting going with the QHY cameras is getting the right adapters and getting the right spacing and it was driving me bananas. Uh, I ended up Frankensteining something. Everything over here is M42 so I've used an M40, M54 to M48 to M42 adapter right here so I don't have to change anything about my existing image train. And as far as I know QHY has heard the feedback from users making the jump over to QHY cameras and they are releasing a full suite of adapter and spacer sets which should make this process a lot easier. Let's quickly talk about the nerdy technical stuff before I get into showing you the images because really that's what actually matters. It has a very low noise profile which is fantastic, the signal to noise ratio is fantastic, the full weld capacity is fantastic, there isn't a spec I don't like on this camera really. The cooling goes down to minus 35 below ambient. Unfortunately in Australia it's so hot here at night uh, 
I can only get down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. I'm usually imaging around minus 15 degrees Celsius, so I was bummed that I couldn't go a little bit further. The driver has unbinned and two x two binning and has four different modes. But the thing I like the most about this camera and the thing that makes it the CCD killer is the 16-bit depth. Now, if you have a camera that's 12-bit and there are other ones like the 294 that are 14-bit, it doesn't mean you can't do images of comparable quality. You really can. It just means you need to take a little bit more data to get there and you can then eventually export a 16-bit image after you've processed it in PixInsight. But having that 16-bit depth come down natively really makes it easy. And I found that I didn't need much data at all to get a really great result, a result that I would need twice as much data to get with a 12-bit camera. This is good to go. Turn the observatory on. Coming right up. Because you don't the want observatory the observatory is not responding. <laughs> let's unpark it. Let's tell it to do sidereal tracking and connect to the QHY268M, which has been very exciting to use. I've already got first light on this. This is second light technically. Now I've been using Sequence Generator Pro for a long time and I do love this software. I understand that it has a subscription now and subscription, it's definitely not anyone's favorite kind of payment method for software. I hated when Adobe, for example, went to the Creative Cloud subscription service. It's just annoying. We are going to search for the Horsehead Nebula. Two degrees, field of view. I really love this tool, the Framing and Mosaic Wizard. That is a pretty dramatic rotation, but you know what? I kind of like it. It's just almost going from corner to corner. I'll, you know, this is just a test image, so let's do it. have noticed I don't have my dew shield on which means I've left the lens cap on. <sighs> Alright, I'll be back. Well this probably isn't the best advertisement for Sequence Generator Pro I know. And I can already hear you guys typing in the comments. Why don't you use Nina? Um, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe one day. Uh, but honestly, I don't think this is a SGP problem. Back we go. Okay, and now it's plate solving. Now I'm gonna do a center on target. So this will not only slew to the target, but plate solve, make sure it's nearby. But even in this test frame, I can already see the horse head basically smack bang in the middle there which is what I was saying about this new EQ8 RH mount. The go-to's are working, they're working better than I've ever experienced before. But hang on, it was within 23 pixels of where we told it to be. But this QHY268M is pretty sensitive so it's picking up a lot of signal even in two minutes. I reckon three minutes will be killer. <laughs> Now this first image of the Horsehead Nebula is a great example of that 16-bit depth. You see the gradient along the dark and light areas as it slowly smooths from one corner to the middle. It's a really buttery smooth result. I've done nothing to this here. This is just how it came out stacked. And this is the kind of quality that I haven't seen since I was using my QHY9, which was a CCD camera. And when the faster CMOS cameras came on board, I definitely switched over like most of us did because I was seduced by the fast readout times and the high signal these cameras were getting. But to get it back now to 16-bit depth on a camera with a lower noise profile and better signal, I just want to buy this camera. If I couldn't afford the 268, I'd definitely consider the 294 anyway. The dark calibration will get rid of any amp glow or issues that you have with those sorts of cameras, but the QHY268 
doesn't have amp glow. It's a really clean sub. But after months and months of rain, it was so nice to actually do a finished image. And this is a narrow band process I did of the Statue of Liberty Nebula. <laughs> I do have some coma in the corners here, I believe caused by my focal reducer, but even still the final result just blows my mind. This is the best photo of the Statue of Liberty Nebula I've ever taken. I shouldn't be surprised because I'm using a new mount, I'm using a new camera, I'm using a new telescope. The jump here is significant and it was really nice actually doing an image after all of this time uh, and having one night which I held onto with both hands and imaged till 4.30 in the morning before sleeping on the couch. It actually made me happy. I, I remembered just how happy I am when I actually finished an image and I sit back and look at that image and I've been looking at it for days. I really enjoy it. So in conclusion, the things that I don't like about the camera Pretty minor, I'd like it to go down a little bit further for cooling. The footprint is a little large. Uh, I do think it'll still work on the rasers, but I'll have to test that later. The other minor driver issue I had was that there was one point where I had to unplug the camera, plug the power back in, and then the USB, and then it will recognize. Uh, and because I'm in an observatory setup, I don't wanna go out there and unplug things. Other than that, the camera performed amazingly, and I really want to hold on to this camera for as long as they let me so that I can do more tests images with this setup and I think I'm gonna to have to sell a guitar or something to buy it. You may or may not agree that CCD is dead just yet. It does have industrial application uses but the market is all CMOS these days and we're now seeing the equivalence of CMOS cameras with CCD cameras as well. So I do think this might be the final nail in the coffin and maybe QHY CCD needs to actually drop the CCD bit from its name and just call themselves QHY. Why? I like it. Anyway, thanks for joining me on my astronomy journey. I hope your astronomy journey is going well as well. And thanks for your patience during this really wet and cloudy summer. It's very hard to run an astronomy channel when you can't take a photo at all. But I've been going for weeks by trying to do very tangential subjects and trying as hard as I can to get a video out a week, whether or not it involves taking a photo, but now I'm glad I have. But really there's no other way to give you the lowdown on a new camera than to actually use it. I hope this has been helpful. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. See you, see you.